Good morning, NOAA Digital Community. Today, I'm very proud, very, very proud to present you Elena Barabi, who has been a uh, yeah, early attendee to our conference in London, in Berlin. And it's so nice to uh, reconnect with attendees who then tell you that they didn't waste their time coming to the conference. And in some cases, they even start new businesses. And Elena is one of these remarkable yeah, hustlers through the digital ecosystem who has had many stations and ended up like Noah as well in impact. And she is heading a fund out of Paris, but we're going to learn a lot more about it, of course, now. So Elena, uh, you're based in Paris. And when you first came to Noah, what, what, uh, for what company did you intend? Where was the conference and how long were you in the business? Was the digital world uh, new to you? Yeah, hi Marco, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so when I first um, attended NOAA, I think the, the first thing is it's, it's great because it was sort of the first growth tech conference for Europe and I was really glad to find an event that was focused, you know, on my area. And I started coming, I think, in 2014-15 um, and that, that, that was a few years into my digital journey. Um, at that point, I was at Eurasio, a listed private equity firm, where I had launched a growth strategy. And I, at that point, back in 2013, there were very few growth funds in Europe. So I'm glad um, we were part of this first generation. And based on that, I you know, wanted to start my own journey as an investor and an entrepreneur in the investment field. Um, and I think I got, you know, passionate about this, uh, scale, the scaling of the European ecosystem. And I hope that with Gaia, we're contributing our piece to this ecosystem. So leading up to Gaia, give us some of your, like, uh, stories, like what companies or what entrepreneurs you could work with and you were fortunate to back. Yeah, so, so Gaia is, is a dream that started in, 2018 with my co-founder um, Alice Abidati. So I think, like any entrepreneurial story, it's first a uh, you know lightning strikes when you find a co-founder. And um, actually, I've known Alice since university, and we had worked at the same fund, um, which um, which is a VPI France, the sort of a public investment arm in France. And then we we work for different funds, uh, Alice in the U.S. and myself in Europe. And um, so we decided to set up this company because we saw that e Europe had a place to take on the global stage for you know, uh, tech companies, innovative companies. And we think Europe has a unique um, in terms of the sort of leaders we can build. And we think specifically on all sustainability areas, um, we can really build leaders out of Europe because of all you know, cultural differ differences. And that's why we decided to set up this firm to write, uh, you know, growth check sizes and part with future leaders that make no compromise between ambition and sustainability. We think the two should mix together well. Um, and, and we think sustainability and impact will be a condition in the future of leadership. Before we uh, talk about some of the deals you're in, tell us like what type of companies are you looking for? How, how early do they have to be? You know, we like to tier investors by capital stage. So you have VC from like one, two million to 20, and then you have growth. Um, what stage you come in? How much does an enterpreneur need to bring to you product, revenue, uh, users, or <laughs> profits? Yeah. So I think if we were to fit in the box, I think we would fit in the, we'll start at early growth. And we could also, you know, um, come later on. So we invest from Series B plus. Um, we invest across Europe, and we tend to look at companies when they're around five million run rate revenues. So probably earlier than most of the larger growth funds. Um, we invest across categories um, because we think, you know, today's there the frontiers between categories are um, are, are are being, you know, uh, less important than before. Um, with, you know, fintech becoming a tech advisor and so on. And um, we back uh, entrepreneurs that are, you know, mission driven. So we look for um, product both both on the B2B and B2C that C side that are a delight to use for the users. We look at companies that are geared toward new audiences, Gen Z's, kids, etc. 
uh, because we think these new um, consumption patterns, they're going to drive what consumption is going to be in the future. So that's us. And we write check size of 10 to 30 million plus. Um, and today we have uh, about eight portfolio companies um, with us. Yeah. Okay. So when I now look at your website uh, and I look at the current portfolio, our journey has just begun. And there's Ubo, Get Accept, Go Henry, Air Call, and Welcome to the Jungle. Uh, which one of those, <laughs> maybe it's tough to say, but in terms of kind of sustainability impact, you think is the most important one or yeah. how, what, what is the sustainability angle? Yeah, that's um, a good point. So um, let me quote Ubo. Um, so Ubo is a social media for Gen Z and we think they're tackling a critical issue in social media today, uh, which is content moderation. And you've seen the space, you know, that has taken social media in our own private lives. It's, you know, hours per day, and it's more than that in the younger generation. And it's, it's not a safe space. Um, and for it to be a safe space, you have to develop a lot of, you know, tech expertise and also human expertise behind you know, how to identify violent or violent uh, behaviors or bullying, etc. And that's very complex. And this is not tackled by the larger social media. And we think if we support this next generation um, social media that caters to, um, you know, Generation Z consumers, and if we create that safe environment for them to make space, we think we're, we're tackling a, a very strong societal issue. So that's how we came to back, you know, social media that is from Europe, which is um, a rarity and, and, and we, we love that. And uh, today they've had, you know, 40 million user, users to date across the globe. Um, so we believe they can have, you know, a massive impact in that category. Um, so that's how we, we envision how our, our, our companies can contribute to um, societal impact. We think also Go Henry has a, an important mission um, to fulfill in terms of, uh, so they're an app and debit cards for uh, parents to give uh, uh, money to their kids. So it's both, you know, your cash allowances that are getting, getting digitized, but it's also teaching your kids as early as, you know, 10 years old to um, save money, to spend money wisely, to donate money. And we think getting early in your lives, getting these financial skills is something that is critical for the development, your development as a person. Um, and typically in the UK where the company is and in the US where you have a credit score that follows you your whole life. So um, getting these good financial habits is very important. Um, and actually more so for, um, uh, for households that are um, you know, not wealthy. Um, so, this is some of the missions that we want to um, support in our, in our portfolio companies. So there are different ways of looking at the sustainable, broader sustainability of business and then, you know, impact driven business models. The framework we have is we, we look at three things. We look at business model, we look at business practices, and we look at the roadmap to build a sustainability trajectory. So the world of investing comes from an approach in the past, which was okay, I'm not investing in firearms, I'm not investing in coal mines, okay, so this is a no. And, um, and also I can do a bit of tick the box, you know, checking on the company, so it's more risk mitigation. And I think now we're coming in, a, a, you know, a new phase of the investment world for, for sustainability and impact. See, these are two different things for me. It's a new area where uh, you know, government, consumers, investors, they expect businesses to do, um, you know, their job properly and also to have positive externalities. There are companies, I agree, that have a direct positive impact on the environment that, that solve, you know, critical issues. And we actively look for those. Um, and I will elaborate on that. And there are companies that have indirect benefits. So when you know, uh, a company like Aircall takes on the subject of uh, Black Lives Matter in the US and the support, uh, you know, charity groups in that. We think they have a societal okay. impact. Absolutely. Not they give tools through. for good causes. Exactly. And so we think because companies and some of the biggest ones, they, you know, pay more taxes than, you know, some countries collect taxes. They're bigger, you know, taxpayers than countries. Um, so because some companies are so big, they have to tackle these subjects. 
So either they do it directly because they have a sustainable business model, either they do it indirectly by supporting their employees, by having you know, no negative externalities and positive externalities. So I think you know, typically in the software space, do you have a big environmental impact? Not as big as you know, um, uh, um, a, a, company, you know, a company in the mining space. You do have an environmental impact, and uh, for all of our put for the company to go through a carbon footprint analysis and to you know transition all of their servers on green energy servers, that's a big impact to cut on the travel. So these are different practices, business practices that can be top notch in their field. And we think if these are B two B SaaS companies lead in their category, they also have to lead by their business practices and by having positive externalities. Now to the impact category. The impact category is about financing companies that have developed an innovation that directly solves some of the most urgent issues that we have as a society that solve poverty, um, that solve you know, environmental challenge in the quality of air, et cetera. We think at the stage at, at which we invest, which is growth stage, um, first, they're not, tons of companies that have reached our stage because the category is still in the early days and we see most of the funds that are impact, we see them at the seed and series A stage. So for us as a growth investor, we hope this category will mature and I hope in the future that we will be able to build a proper impact growth fund that is 100% on that. But at this stage, I just can't do that. Then there's a second thing, which is, is there like a financing market fits for these impact companies. And what you're pointing to um, for some of the companies you advise is that you, you were struggling to find the right investors and people who would have, you know, would take that risk and have this long-term horizon. And I agree, there's an issue today and you know how the funds are built and the sort of IRR we have to show to our investors for us to support truly disruptive tech in the environmental space, for example. And so it probably takes a different sort of capital. So today we see seeing corporates invest in that. We're seeing sovereign wealth funds. Um, I hope in the future we will find, you know, shorter timelines of R&D and financing for these companies. Because beyond the disruption of the companies, they also have an issue with finding also the right audience. You have to have the users actually massively switch to these um, categories. There are two areas of impact. There is the impact through companies like who measure uh, the deforestation and send this data systematically in a monthly report to all 50,000 environmental journalists in the world. And you do propaganda on a positive way. Or you just say, okay, there is like, 5% of the startups may be doing stuff who are purely sustainable and enablers, platforms, data, processes, whatever, product, projects, cookie cutter, South Pole, carbon offset. But then there's 95% of the economy, which actually only because we are now sustainable, they will still go on, right? There will still be energy, of telecommunication, course. transportation. And while everyone, including myself, um, is focused on the cute animals and the forests and the stuff we really dream about. Somebody also needs to take care of bringing sustainability and environmental ecosystem retention in the old businesses, which are like when digital came, <laughs> you know, the pre-digital or the old incumbents, or we called them champions at Noah Berlin, they also became digital. And, I get, I get it now a lot better. Yet you seem to focus as a person, as a fund, on these highly uh, yeah, large user groups, like social networks, psychology. Um, have you studied like the Cambridge Analytical scandal? Because you could also infiltrate the world with, with good environmental help, right? If you find the people who care about the same things like the drilling in the Okavango Delta right now. Um, are you fascinated by protecting or saving the environment or are you mo mostly focused on really finding like the next SaaS investor and putting him on a green track? <laughs> it's a so, great yeah, question. Yeah, that's, that's a fair <laughs> question. Um, and I think, you know, uh, the, the problem of our environment and, you know, 
um, us respecting the limits of our planet is not only obviously saving some, you know, endangered species and some, uh, you know, environmental landscapes and environmental, you know, treasures of the earth. That that's one thing. And I think mm -hmm. this is today. It can, it's a, it's done by a mix of businesses and charities. This is today out of our scope as an investor because it will require you to invest in specific geographies and so on. But then to, to your point, um, there's 95% of the companies that we use on a daily basis as human beings. We keep on using thermal cars. We keep on using you know, our computers that are using you know, rare metals that are destroying the environment. Um, and our job we think as a sustainable investors is that, is that to make sure that today the majority of the companies behave in a way that you know, doesn't negatively impact the environment so that they make sure that their suppliers um, have you know, strong environmental policies, that they're not destroying the forest, that they're not destroying different um, you know, environmental assets. And we think today with this fund, our role is acting on this majority of the economy and make sure this majority of the economy doesn't represent um, a negative impact on the environment and society. How do you position yourself towards the entrepreneur. I think the investor story and the differentiation between impact and impact, uh, I think it was very important. I think for me, it is actually the most important lesson of this video chat. It's like impact is a horizontal, uh, yeah, impact is horizontal, right? You cannot just say, we now the only forest or oceans or food tech, it's a horizontal and you bring it um, yeah, into all the mechanisms and investments decisions in the standardized form. But how do you pitch it to an entrepreneur? What, what do you promise them? Yeah, so um, I think the first thing is um, there's no lack of capital out there. So you don't differentiate by you know, the amount of money you put on the table. And I think you, di you differentiate by the quality of the relationship that you built. And you build mm -hmm. that quality of relationship. So by ideally building a, a relationship over time. So we like to build a relationship early on. And when you have little time to convince them during a process and the process are really very short these days, I think you know the, the important thing is what you see is what you get. So what they see is um, they see a small agile team, very entrepreneurial. Um, how many are with, you? Uh, how many are you? You're based in Paris, so right? How, how big is it? Yeah, you have a nice Paris. office like Champs Elysees or something? <laughs> Not yet. We're a small, small team. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have um, people in Paris, Berlin, New York, and Toronto. And so that's also helpful. Um, and uh, so we're a team of 15. So half of, the, of us were dedicated to investment and half to value creation. So, you know, they get value creation support. Um, they get us making quick decisions. They get to see the decision makers at the first meeting. And, and your investment, you think you do like, uh, well, it's all Europe, so that's one. And then it's like France, Germany, like a little bit better luck. It's like a Porata type of thing. And it looks like it seems to be all companies with young uh, teams, right? It, it, it looks like, there's a bit of a generation investment theme here and like the smart uh, post social network uh, era or it, 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 it feels a bit like this. There's, there's a mix. Oh, that's a fair point. I think, you know, a vast majority of the companies we're seeing they're you know, um, first time entrepreneurs and founder led, but we do have, you know, companies that are not founder led and that are led by CEOs that have past expertise in other areas and so on. <laughs> So there is no, you know, specific criteria on the founders apart that, you know, sharing the vision with them and them also, you know, not willing to create a good company. Um, and so that's good for their own people, good for their customers. Um, so I think that's, that's the common theme around them. And obviously these products were there to be or B2C, they address, uh, they target a certain generation, whether, you know, it's us as users of business tools whether it's us as consumers and we think you know new generations um as the, the the use cases of the new generations in the business and in the consumer space they're going to deploy to the whole society and we think if we support great tools that are intrinsically virtuous i think this is going to have you know spread across society and that's going to have a good impact so that's how we look at that nice
yeah, you have to start somewhere also, right? Um, okay. I guess it's a, it's always a combination. Uh, maybe the last question on investment style, like, do you like to invest as first institutional money in? Is it the prerequisite that there has been some type of investor there before? So you have like a little bit of structure because series B plus is, um, it's an interesting, sp it's, it's an interesting space. You're really in the scale up space. Um, so the deals you are, maybe you, you can see what the sweet spot is you're looking for and what partners you had, like co-investors, um, uh, how do you, like your sweet spot, uh, how you like to work? I guess it's, it's a shareholder's team, no? you're, or yeah, you're a minority shareholder. investor, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually we've, we've had um, companies that have been backed by VCs, so that's I think the majority of our deal flow. Interestingly, one of our portfolio company, Go Henry, has been financed mostly by crowdfunding before that. And we think this equity story was very important for this company because the customer loved so much the product, the parents loved it so much that they invested in the company. So we're quite open to different sorts of, you know, backing uh, before us. Um, and I think that think important... crowdfunding is crowdfunding is here to stay. There's Cedars in the UK. I think they. By the way, Zono Motors we talked about earlier. They raised 70 million on Cedars. That's uh, that's just massive. So we see this. Incredible. This is a strong, you know, trend. And we think that yeah. for some products that you know the audience believes it works, in, yeah. it works. Um, and it's not irrelevant at all. Uh, I think um, it, it, yeah, to the contrary, it contributes to the story of the company. And what we care about is just you know building the right equity story. So do we have like sufficient long-term capital? Um, do we share the same vision for the company today? And we can share you know the same vision with a crowd. <laughs> We can share the same vision with, you know, family office, a corporate. So as long as there's, um, yeah, so quite open about that. But other than that, we've co-invested with, you know, other VCs, uh, Balaton, Bessemer, um, yeah. Super. And have you had female founders in your portfolio? Yeah, so uh, we have one. Um, that is uh, where <laughs> one of the females, so that's Go Henry in the UK, one of the founders is a female. We uh, so we track that in our deal flow, um, and we tend to over index our sourcing on these companies. Um, and I think we hope eventually we will have like a, a, a better percentage than the market on, on our, our female led um, companies. But that's um, that's a target. What is your vision? How far you and your partners would to like to take this great fund? Um, so I think the, the broader vision for us is that there is a space um, in Europe for you know responsible investing in the tech space. Um, within you know tech is, is great, it's ambitious, it, it, it scales and so on. Um, but we have to make sure that the thing, the tech, the products that are going to make you know the most of our consumption tomorrow, we have to make sure these are responsible you know products and and companies and so on so this is the space we want to be in backing responsible innovation and we want in the future to have that impact in europe but also in other geographies you add a lot of value to your portfolio you mentioned earlier that some uh, of the team are uh, portfolio help. i remember atomic presenting in berlin the new approach which was like i think one on six so you have six helpers for one investment professional um I know from Noah that there's huge value to have syndicated knowledge on stuff, like for example, how you linked in automation for marketing. It's one of these, <laughs> you have hundreds of tools and nobody really knows what's good and what's bad. What value add you bring to your portfolio? So um, an important part of um, the value we bring, I think is that we also offer a new governance model where instead of uh, you know us being the board representative, we offer uh, to be represented by a third person, a third party person, who's not like a full-time or part-time employee of Gaia. And what we do is, is look for, you know, the executive um, in the specific uh, vertical of the company that could bring the more value to the table. And, and we've done that so on Go Henry, we're being represented by Trisha Han, who's the CEO of a um, consumer app named My Fitness Ball, and she has a ton of expertise on building consumer businesses in the US. And we think she brings, you know, much more value than anyone in the team could bring to this company. So that's one we offer, and this is, I think, really disruptive. 
instead of being like the third or fourth financial investor around the table at the board, we offer it to be represented by a proper a person that has proper experience in the space. So that's one. And then there are some specific workflows that we um, organize for the companies. It's a la carte, you know, and I think at Series B and, and C and later a ton of times, you already have an amazing team in place. So I think it's on their hands to, to, to select us or not. But we help on ESG, so building a roadmap that makes them a top player in terms of what they can do. So we help them on B Corp certification. We have them on carbon footprint analysis and so on. We help them on MA. Who do you use for the carbon footprint analysis? Like um, what so, tools? You... Yeah. So tools like uh, Qantas. It's a like consulting firm that that you know yeah. works also with larger corporates. And also we have an internal tool, um, uh, and it's a tool developed. Um, uh, internally, its name is um, uh, Net Environmental Contribution, so NEC, and we position our portfolio company on a scale to minus 100 to plus 100, and we measure on different scopes, so on their direct business model and also on the whole value chain, what are their carbon footprint and also um, impact on different parts of the environment. So that's a very, it's a mix of quantitative and qualitative analysis, and that's where we position our portfolio company. I think it's a really nice Dif this is what I meant earlier. Is how do you sell it? So this is like your differentiator. You know, we have you on the ESG side. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So you know, that's a, that's a thing, and I think that speaks also to our values. Um, when you know, I I think money doesn't make a difference, but I think the sort of relationship you can build is important. And I think increasingly, the entrepreneurs we speak to, they want their their investors to be okay with some of the um, business decisions that they're going to make. So typically, one of our portfolio companies um, decided to, you know, um, uh, not use any partial employment scheme of the state. They decided to keep everyone full time during the COVID crisis. And we knew from the beginning that this is a company that has, you know, high uh, societal um, commitments. And we also write that word that in the bylaws of the companies. So increasingly, having investors that can be okay with this sort of decision and that costs us more money to do that. Um, it's important, and actually, the sustainability conversation it comes more from them, more from them than us. And obviously, they like that we have this framework that we can share. So, you know, as a first fund and as a small portfolio at this point, what we can offer is benchmarking them against others. And over time, as the portfolio grows, we can offer that you know benchmark them across a bigger category in terms of practices, model, business model, and impact. So, this is what where we want to help as well. Well, Nina, again, amazing chat. Uh, I learned a lot. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank Nina. You, Marco.